Hi, my name is Katherine Gomes and I'm the author of Apology of Math and I want to give you an overview of level one of exploring creation with mathematics. So level one is traditionally for a first grader, although obviously it's up to you to choose the best level for your child. In order to use the program, you need two books, the Spiral Bound Student Book, which has all the lessons and also your child writes in this book, and then the Teaching Guide, which has the answers and also all the notes that I wrote for you about how to best teach your child math. And there's also some, some additional resources that I'll show you. You will need manipulatives. Manipulatives are so important at the elementary level in order to help kids process these ideas. And a lot of them are household items, but there's a few math specific items you're gonna need to purchase. So linking cubes or snap cubes, these are great. Base 10 blocks, they come in a set. Here's uh, to what tens look like, and then these are like the unit cubes that represent ones. Standard sets also have hundreds and thousands. Pattern blocks, which are so much fun just to play with, let alone do math lessons with. And finally, some 3D shapes. Now, you can buy a specific you know, math set of 3D shapes, or you can look at the list of which shapes you need, and you might even be able to find them in like a set of wooden blocks that you already own. All right, let's take a look at how the program works. Let's start by taking a look at a typical lesson and all the lessons follow a similar format. So this is lesson 48, about halfway through the year. Notice that it starts with an activity. So every lesson starts with a hands-on activity or almost every lesson where the kids play a game or they do something with manipulatives to get them excited for the lesson um, and also to prepare them for the content that they're going to be learning and practicing. So here's the activity and then we go into the lesson. So these um, can be short or a little longer. They show examples, vocabulary, that type of thing. Then the child does the practice. It could be one page. In this case, it's two pages of practicing related facts. So that is the format, activity, lesson, practice, okay? Now, every lesson is in the teaching guide with answers and notes. So here is this same lesson in the teaching guide. One thing we did that I'm so excited about is we put the thumbnails for you and then put the answers right on top I let my child check his answers himself. Um, it just saves a lot of time and then, um, you know, it works pretty easily because of the thumbnails. There's also notes on how to best teach the lesson. Now these vary depending on the lesson. I might be giving you a strategy. I might be telling you how to help someone who's struggling, how to take it further if your child is just really excelling and needs more of a challenge. So that's what's in here. Okay, now the content in the first grade book um, it's just really a rich book. I'm so excited about all that we were able to include. We started, unit one is introduction to addition. And I really started with a broad entry point. I started pretty simply with numbers and really basic addition. We do review some kindergarten content here in the first unit because I wasn't sure what you would have done for kindergarten and I wanted kids to be able to be successful. My main goal in this first unit was to have them really having fun. This is the first step on their elementary math journey. So what was most important to me is that they would be excited and think, wow, this is going to be a really cool subject. All right, but from there, I start gradually building up into richer and more complex mathematics. So don't be fooled. If you look at the first chapters, it might look pretty basic, but we really bold build up from there into you know, a great year of math. So then in the second unit, we move into addition and subtraction. And another thing that we focus on that's so important in mathematics is the relationship between the two. So I'm always um, making sure kids see how these different ideas connect so that it can lead to long-term retention. And this is just a quick flip through. I'm just kind of trying to give you a feel. After they've had lots of practice with addition and subtraction, we are ready for some bigger numbers. And so we're gonna head into the unit on place value. A 
Okay, so in the unit on place value, now we're working up to 120. We're talking about tens and ones. Um, we're skip counting, all that great stuff. We're using lots of base 10 blocks and beans and games to just keep it tactile when they're first learning these concepts. After the unit on place value, we get to one of my favorite units, although really, I love all of them, and that is measurement and data. So measurement and data is so important. It's important for science, and it's also important in upper level mathematics. And I just had a lot of fun working on these units because it's so easy to make it hands-on, um, especially as homeschoolers. We can just have our child go and measure things pretty easily. Um, so just a great, really fun unit. I think you'll enjoy this and be excited when you get to this part. Telling time. Here's the data and graphs section. I've noticed a lot of high schoolers really struggled with graphs. It was a bit of a trend that I noticed. So starting at this level, I really wanted to build that skill. Of course, on level uh, at level one, you know, it's picture graphs, bar graphs, nothing too crazy, but I'm already thinking ahead to what they're gonna need in fourth grade and sixth grade and then beyond so that we're building those skills now. And then the last um, unit is geometry. This is where you're using those shapes, just having a lot of fun. We're making connections to art and that type of thing. And of course, it's always important to celebrate when you finish. All right, so that's just like a quick overview of what's in the book. Um, you can see the whole table of contents on Apologia's website, so that would probably be helpful as well. Let's take a look at the teaching guide and what's in here. So um, you already saw we did the answers, of course, and notes, but there are some other just parent helps that we put in this book. So everything that we wanted to give you is in this book, and then everything that your child needs is in this book. Okay, so first and foremost, I need this, so I was so excited to put this in these books. This is a suggested pacing guide or daily schedule. Of course, you can veer from this, but the goal here is we laid it all out for you, all the lessons, the projects, the skills practice, day by day, and you can check it off. This way, at a glance, you can tell, how are we doing? Are you halfway through? Are you on track? Do you need to speed up, slow down? That type of thing. Okay, so that's in here. Of course, um, all the answers and the notes like I showed you before. For each unit, there is a skills practice. Let me highlight that while I have the pacing guide here. So as you're working through the lessons in the student book, there's also a skill listed that you need to take five to 10 minutes to practice with your child. So for instance, um, on this day, they're practicing the addition facts that make seven, like, you know, one plus six, two plus five, that group of addition facts. So it's always a pretty specific skill. It's not too broad, pretty quick. Like I said, five, 10 minutes, maybe even faster than that. Now, how do you know what to do for this? That's all explained in here. So for each unit, there is a specific skill or maybe a few skills that you're going to practice. Those are laid out when you start that unit and you will see them all. So here, skill three in this unit is the addition facts that add up to six, seven, eight, and nine. And there's notes on exactly what that means and then there's lots of suggestions for how you're going to practice that. So there will be games. We have resources on the Book Extras website that you can print. Um, you can use flashcards. For each skill, I've given several different suggestions so you can tailor it to your family. Sometimes in my house, we just do some flashcards real quick because we wanna keep it simple. And then other days we play a game and it's so much fun. Lastly, in the back of the teaching guide are all the tear out sheets that you use in the games and the activities. So these are all in this book here. We also have a copy of them available on the Book Extras website if you want to print um, it instead of tearing it out from here.
Okay, finally, I just want to highlight a couple um, unique aspects of the program since you're probably comparing and contrasting as you make your decision. So one of the coolest things about having Apologia release a math program is that there's a science connection. And in each unit, we've incorporated scientific ideas. And then in each level, there's one project that is specifically science related. So in the first grade book, it is the data and measurement project. And first grade, the science connection is to astronomy. So we're tying in those ideas throughout the book. And for our unit project, we talked about weather and how it affects space launches uh, or rocket launches. So we have here some information for the kids about why weather is important to space travel. And then they are going to practice what they've been learning about tally charts and bar graphs in a math and science project where they're tracking the weather and answering questions. These are so much fun. There's a project at the end of every unit, but this science one I just really love because it's so fun to already be showing kids that math is the language of science. Okay, and then the other unique feature is there's a Christian component. So just like you saw the science connection here, at the beginning of every unit, there is like a short devotional that I wrote explaining to the kids how the math they're about to learn points them towards the creator. So they're about to learn all this beautiful geometry and just, oh, I love these lessons. So I wrote uh, a little uh, piece for them to just think about how God is a God of beauty and isn't this just so neat how we have this beautiful math and this beautiful world that we live in and we can even see mathematical ideas reflected in the beauty of nature. All right, that is Apologia Math Level 1.